Why is it so hard for us to find peace in the world that we're living in and two simple keys that we can use to find peace within our lives? Hey, what's going on, Recreators? This is Nick back with the Life Recreator podcast, where it's all about learning, healing and growing. On this episode, I want to tackle two issues. Number one, why it's so hard for us to find peace in the world today. And we're going to also be looking at the two simple keys we can use to really find peace, where we can find peace, where we can be at ease with our circumstances, where we could be at ease with ourselves, where we could be at ease with others and relationships, and we could be at ease with just life goals, things that we're trying to pursue. We could just be at ease, not saying that they're not going to be hard, not saying that there's not going to be difficulties and challenges. This is part of life. We're going to have those difficulties. We're going to face those challenges. But at the same time, I also know and I understand that I can have those things in life. I can have those challenges to face, but still be at ease with who I am as a man and who I am with what I'm trying to pursue in life and the things that I'm trying to move forward to. There's three main thieves of peace. These are the things that a lot of us can face on a daily day to day basis. And these thieves, their whole intent, their whole purpose really is to rob us of our peace, right? It's meant to rob us of being at a place of ease within our lives. And so the first one that I really pinpointed was worrying about the opinions of other people. For me, this was such a huge thing that I had to get over within my life. Now, for most of my life, I'll say that I always tried to act and I always tried to put on a front like I wasn't concerned with what other people think. Now, let me just clear this up. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be mindful of what other people are thinking. We shouldn't be concerned with how we present ourselves to the world. I'm not saying that when I say we're worried about what other people think. I think that it's important for us to make sure we are basically putting forward our best effort and we're showing up to the world in the best way that we can do it. But what I am talking about is letting those opinions of others really dictate our own peace internally. When we think about how our culture is now, how how many how things have changed so so much over the last decade in life, I think this is one of the things that it is really hard for us to manage and get a handle on because now everybody has such easy access in telling you what they think you should be doing or how you should be doing it. Where I think the dilemma comes in is when we start getting those opinions and we start getting that feedback from other people and maybe those opinions, those feedback aren't the friendliest opinions or they're not the nicest opinions that we could get. We begin to start letting those opinions of others really dictate how we're living, right? We start moving in a way, we start acting in a way, we start talking in a way that we know is going to give a good response, right? It's going to give a good, like we want people to give a, a, or have a good opinion about us. And so when we think about the fact that the majority of our behavior is dictated more from how we look on the outside, we realize that those things are really going to drive drive that anxiety within us right because we're always going to be on edge we're always going to have this tension of wondering if you know if the way that i'm behaving the way that um the way that others are looking at me are good enough for me is it good enough for am i being good enough to be accepted within this group or am i being good enough to be accepted as a man within this environment and and it causes a lot of tension within us, right? Because here's the thing, I might be doing things on the outside that I may not totally agree with internally. They may not add up to my values. They may not add up to my beliefs, but because I'm so worried and because I'm self-conscious about the opinions of others, it's gonna cause this cognitive dissonance within me. It's gonna cause this friction within myself because I know that how I'm acting or how I'm allowing the world to perceive me is not what I really believe that I am. All right. So that's the that first thing. And this robs us of a lot of peace, man. The opinions of other people rob us of a lot of peace. The second thief of our peace is the issue of carrying burdens that are not meant to be ours, carrying burdens that are not meant to be ours. This was a huge thing for me. 
One of my love languages when I don't know if you ever read the book by Gary Chapman on the five love languages, it talks about how we express our love and how we express, how we show others our love. And for me, mine is acts of service, right? I'm very hands-on. I really like to do things. I really like to put action into how I am showing up and how I'm loving someone. And so where I realized the difficulty with that can be is that a lot of times I would take up things or I would volunteer myself to do things that really weren't necessarily my job or my responsibility to do. And so here I was thinking that I'm showing someone love or I'm expressing my love to them by doing these things. But at the same time, those things were causing a burden and then they were leading to resentment that I would start having for, for these people that I'm doing things for. It would be this resentment of, okay, I'm trying to help, especially when you aren't, you're not getting the, the feedback or especially when you're not getting the response that you're hoping to get from that other individual, you start getting bitter and you start getting resentful because you feel like in your mind, you're doing all these things and you're trying to help carry this load, but maybe it's not your load to really carry. And so a lot of us, we are walking through life and we're picking up these burdens we're walking with these burdens of other people's traumas. We're taking on ourselves and we're trying to help trying to walk through life with these people, taking up their burdens and walking with their burdens, not realizing that all those burdens that are not ours to be walking around with are causing all this internal frustration. And it's causing us to live in a way that is just robbing us of our peace, picking up other people's burdens. They, they can rob us of our peace. Carrying things that we're not supposed to be carrying is gonna rob us of our peace. There is a affirmation that I came up with last year that really helped me with this. It really helped me to understand this, right? Just because I believe I can do everything doesn't mean that I have to do everything. Just because I believe I can do everything doesn't mean that I have to do everything. There are a lot of us walking around with the belief that they can do everything. And that's good. I think it's good to have that mental fortitude and to believe that you can put and do anything that you put your mind to. But just because you believe that you can do everything does not necessarily mean that you have to do everything. I live now by a rule, man. If you're toxic, you got too much drama, you got too much things going on, man. And no time to be around it because that's not my, that's not meant for me to carry. Your drama and your toxicity is not meant for me to be carrying and walking around with. He didn't build me to be carrying around your drama and your trauma. I got enough things that I got to deal with on my own and I have to work through with myself of being a man that I don't have time to be carrying your drama. And the last thing that robs us of our peace in, and this is very general, it can be really boiled down into so many different areas, is this issue of fear. Fear, right? The false expectations appearing real. Fear robs us so much. When I think about this, I think about the same energy that we can use to worry and that we use to be fearful of things is the same energy that we can use to create and manifest the things that we want in our lives. And it's really up to us just making the choice on which thing we're gonna choose. Am I gonna use my energy to be fearful and to be afraid of all these situations that don't in, end up even playing out the way that I think they are? Or am I gonna use that energy to really create and manifest the things that I want in my life rather than being so bound up by that worry and that fear within my life, which one am I going to choose? That's what it really boils down to where, what's going to be the thing that I put my focus and my attention on the things that I want or the things that I'm afraid of. And I realized that this area of fear was a huge thing that, that robs a lot of us. Let's talk about two simple keys that I believe can help us help you and I with peace within our lives. And it's in the, it's in the Bible, the Bible. I know a lot of people may not be religious. They may not think about it that way. I've been really trying to look at the Bible, not more from a religious standpoint, but more of a life application and helping me to be a better version of myself and really 
find what it is that I need to be doing in this world and really just showing up to the world in the way that God needs me to. That's how I'm looking and analyzing the Bible. So Philippians four, it talks about, it gives us the keys, right? Paul in the Philippians, he's writing to them and he says, Hey, there's a simple, these simple keys. There's two simple keys that if you use these keys, help you to obtain a peace that goes beyond all understanding. What I feel like when we break that down, that peace that goes beyond all understanding is when you think about that peace, it's a peace that sees what's happening in our natural eye, our logical mind. We see the things that are going on around us. But even though we see the things that are happening on the outside, we have a deeper sense of calmness, stillness, that when we look at everything that is going on around us, we should be in chaos. But because we're implementing these two simple keys, we should be in complete chaos, but we're, we're not right. We're at a place that, that calm, we are grounded. We are internally, we're balanced. That's what I think about with that piece that goes beyond understanding. It's a piece that says, Hey, I know that this situation is supposed to make me scared, afraid, worried about the opinions of other. It's a situation that I'm trying to take this burden on whatever the case may be. I know that I see this situation playing out like this, but because I'm implementing these two keys, I am understanding that no matter what's happening on my external world, I have a piece internally that goes beyond my logical understanding. It goes beyond my natural understanding, if you will. And so the first key that Paul talks about is prayer, prayer. It's prayer. When we think about prayer, I remember growing up thinking about prayer as always being this, this process that had to be complicated, it had to be drawn out. It had to be on your knees. It had to be at a certain time. It had to be, there were so many different stipulations. I felt that the re religion puts on prayer. And when I look at, and I think about prayer, when I look throughout the Bible, I realize that prayer is simply us just communicating with God, whatever way that may look like, whatever way that may look like that works for me. I remember being in a church where they would say, Hey, if you're praying inside of your mind and it's not out loud and you're not using your words and then you're not praying in tongues and you're not praying correctly, how can we put a limit on how we communicate with God? If we believe that God is infinite and we believe that there is no boundaries on his character and who he is, and there's no boundaries on how we can communicate with him, then Prayer to me just simply says that we just need to be talking to God about everything. So when something comes up that I'm worried about, that I might be fearful about, and I see it creeping in and trying to rob me of my peace, my first response should be to pray about it. That may not be being on my knees. That may not be going inside of a prayer closet and doing X, Y, and Z and all these stipulations that many of us growing up to think that we need to do it may just be a simple word it may be god help me it may be i don't understand how to do this give me some wisdom on understanding it give me some direction on how to understand it i don't understand what to do in this relationship god reveal to me a better way to deal with this help me you think about it god when we pray and we ask for these things god will always give us an answer He'll always give us an answer. The Bible tells us that when we are looking for it, we're always going to get an answer to the direction and the things that we see. Now we may always get an answer. It doesn't mean that we're always going to be paying attention and understanding that that's the answer for the thing that we may be praying for. But I believe that we are always going to get an answer. And so Paul tells us, he says, our first key to finding peace is really prayer, praying about everything, sending up everything, talking to God about everything. If something's bothering me, if something's stressing me out, if something is making me worried, if I'm worried about what this other person says, or if I'm worried about how am I going to handle this or how am I going to deal with this? Paul says, just pray about it. Just lift it up in prayer. 
I know based on my experiences that I've had with my own personal relationship with God, that some of the prayers that have been answered were those simple prayers where I was honest and raw with God. And I said, hey, God, this is where I am. I can't figure this out. You got to help me. God, please help me. Right. God, I need help. I need guidance. I need wisdom. I need understanding. I need money. I need finances. I need another idea. I need something new. I feel like when we go to God in prayer, he'll give us those things. So to use this in what we were talking about before on the different thieves that rob us, if I'm worried about other people's opinions, the prayer might be something along the lines of God, show me who I need to be paying attention to in my life. God, show me who I need to be giving attention to in my life. God, show me the direction that I need to be moving in my life. God, help me to see and understand that. And God will reveal them to us. It may be if I'm struggling with carrying other burdens, right? The Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, all you that are weary and heavy, bring your burdens to me and I give you rest. That's what Jesus was saying, right? He said, bring your, lay your burdens down. So it may be in prayer, God, I can't handle this burden. That was one of the prayers, especially this year that really helped me. God, I can't handle this burden. Help me to understand how to handle it. Or I'm giving this burden to you so you can work this out because you can work it out in a better way that I know how to work out, that I could even understand how to work out. And we just got to stay still and let God do that. Then that peace that goes beyond our natural understanding comes when we take that time to pray. So first simple key is prayer. Second simple key that Paul talks about in that verse, he talks about thanksgiving, gratefulness, being grateful, gratitude. Man, when I shifted my mindset to thanking God for every situation, thanking God for every circumstance, no matter how it was looking or how it was playing out in my life, when I started thanking God, things started changing, right? You think about, we attract into our lives certain situations, things, people based on the energy that we're using and the energy that we're giving out. So when I'm complaining, when I'm frustrated, when I'm agitated, when I'm anxious, I'm only attracting more of those things in my life. When I'm complaining about things, I'm really not, but we can complain about things and then think things are gonna get better. But the reality of it is, is that I'm really just attracting more of the thing that I'm complaining about because I'm using that energy that I have within me to complain about things and it's gonna attract things. But when I switch that to gratitude, and I say, hey, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this person in my life. I'm thankful for this situation in my life. I'm thankful for, you know, what whatever it may be that is going on in my life. I'm going to attract more of that good thing in my life by Thanksgiving. And that gratefulness you think about, I think about the people that I know that are always thankful and that are always showing gratitude and that live in that mindset and that type of atmosphere of gratitude. Some of those people that I know are the most fulfilled, happiest, understanding. They just, things are just working in their favor. And it seems like things just end up working out a lot better in their favor because rather than them always complaining about how things are going, they are thankful for how things are going. And therefore it brings more good things to be thankful for in their lives. It's a simple mindset shift that says, instead of me complaining about how things are, how people are, how life is, how the world is, switching my mindset to say, I'm thankful for how things are going, how the world is. When you shift to that mindset of gratitude, I guarantee you things are beginning to change in your life. When I switch to that mindset of just being grateful for how things were going, being grateful for where I'm at in this time in life, wherever it may be. It opened up so many opportunities in my mind and within me to really understand the peace of God. I went through it last year, 2021, man, and I was getting, I was getting slammed upside the head mentally, physically, all those different things. When I switched to saying, you know what? I'm glad I went through that. I'm glad I experienced that because now I know what it feels like to be in those dark places. And because I know what it feels like to be in those dark places, 
I can now take that experience and maybe help somebody else that may find themselves in those same moments in those same circumstances and help bring them out of that, help bring them out of that dark place. Being thankful, what it does is it changes the perspective. It's almost like I look at, I look at Thanksgiving and gratefulness as like glasses, like frames on how you see the world, how you view the world. It changes everything. Taking off the rose colored glasses and being thankful and seeing the world in different in a different light it changes how you look at things it changes how you interact with people it changes how you approach people and therefore in turn it it changes how people approach you and when we learn to be thankful for those things when we learn to make thanksgiving a habit a gratitude has to become a habit i believe gratitude has to become a habit it has to be something that we intentionally work on a daily basis gratitude being happy being thankful and showing gratitude. I believe it's a habit that we all have to work on and have to develop. It's like a muscle when we're lifting weights and we're trying to get our weight up and trying to lift heavier weights. It takes time to build that and gratitude is the same way. So when we change that, it gives us that peace because we know, hey, everything is going to be all right. Tying it back to prayer, right? Prayer with that gratitude says, okay, God, I know I'm sending this up to you. I'm asking you to help give me direction. I'm trusting and believing that you're going to give me that direction. And therefore, I'm going to be thankful for how this plays out and however the chips may fall, because I know that your intent for me is only good and it, it will only be good. And so when I can have that mindset, I could be at peace now, right? When I know that I can go to God in prayer and I know that I can just be thankful for the situations, it's a simple key to peace. The things that I've realized that the things that we're trying to figure out in life are usually, they usually have really simple solutions. It's when we make it complicated that we get frustrated. When we make things in our life more complicated than they need to be, it'll always lead us to being more frustrated. It'll always lead us to being more, more on more anxious about things when we're making life more complicated than it needs to be it always is going to lead us to that but when we shift our mindset to the simple solutions like i said here the two simple keys to finding peace are prayer and thanksgiving having gratitude and just working on those making those a habit within our lives and over time once we make those two things a habit in our life guess what we start to feel, recognize, understand, and be at peace. Even when everything around us is going crazy, everything is in chaos, everything is looking like the world is upside down. But when I implement those two simple keys, I find that I can find peace, I can be at peace. So I wanna know, as I wrap this up, what's your thoughts on this? Maybe what are some things that you've implemented in your life that have helped you to find peace or maybe what are some moments or what are some what are some experiences that you've had and that you had to really wrestle with and try and find peace in your life maybe on the flip side maybe you have or you're walking and you're experiencing that peace that we're talking about here what are some of the things that you did to really help you get to that point this has been nick recruiters until next time as always keep learning keep healing and keep growing Peace.